Hello and welcome back to the You Up podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. It is so good to be back here with you, Jordana. How are you? What's going on? I'm good. Early recording. I have to say, this month has been very busy for us. Busy, busy, yes. busy, busy. Um, this will come out. We have a, our, our last string of shows yes. when this comes out. Boston, D.C., New York City. If you're out there, assemble the group chat. I think D.C.'s done so. Yeah. If you're in D.C., it's too late for you. But yeah. New York and Boston, I think there's some tickets left. Get involved. I mean, I mean, these shows are a community event, so to speak. They're yeah. fun. They're energetic. I, I'm always impressed by the listeners that come out. Like I, I, I just did shows in Long Beach last night, and like, it's an Which, hour away. How was it? it was fun. Your town, <laughs> yes. you know, the, that you're gonna crush and and and. It's a, listen, it's a beautiful. It's a. It's. Um, it's a beach town. It's beautiful, it is a, be a beach place. town, beach people. And but like you know, you you, you every time I do a show, mm -hmm. I mean, I did it at a bar. It was at this bar in Long Beach. They've got like great low key bars. For I sure. would I yeah. would argue like some of the better like beachy like off the beach beers buckets that type of thing. That's true, and that's sort of the beauty of it. I mean, I know I I I talk a lot of about. <laughs> You know, well, corporatizing it, yeah. but that is like the those are the best parts of it right, for sure. Right. Like it's, great bars, um, very like like a it feels like beachy without being a pre no pretentiousness. Right it's, here, here's what's gonna happen in Long Beach. Someone's gonna go shots, and no one in that group is gonna go. Ah, I got work tomorrow. Like yeah. everyone's gonna have a shot. Exactly. Like they're just a fun group of people. But like I did this show, I'm doing like a new hour of material. I'm trying to stretch new jokes and see where I can take them. It's just the, I don't, not a lot of comics have that opportunity. And it's because of the audience that listens here. So they come in with a fun attitude, ready to like enjoy themselves. And that's what our live shows are like. You know, like yes. when people come, they're ready to party, they're ready to hang. It's fun dating at makeovers, deal reveals, uh, you know, red flag deal breaker. We play all the games, we bring people on stage. Um, and if you're in Boston, New York, DC, and you want to be a part of our show, it might be too late for you since it's the day before. Um, <laughs> well, keep trying. You well, know, but uh, but keep also trying. come. You know, keep trying. We probably already have our outline prepared. Okay. <laughs> but if you know, well, if we we're do the questions at the end too. That's, oh yeah, so we're we're gonna take live questions at the end. You're gonna be able to text in the questions, so you can definitely participate. And it's just a great time. Just come, we we love having people on stage. We love interact. Those best parts best. are when we're interacting with the audience. When it's real, it adds stakes. You know, you see the person in front of you. You have their. You know, they're living, breathing moment. You know, they're going through something. We're going to help. We're going to try and help, you know? Exactly. Um, I got to tell you, my weekend, I just, I, I had, my parents were here for a wedding that I went to as well. And I had something funny happen at the wedding. Okay. There was, uh, the wedding was unbelievable. Yes. Uh, you, uh, I saw glimpses. It was like your stylist's wedding. Yes. yes. Uh, Lisa Gordon, Gordon Style House on Instagram, I think. Can we check that out? I don't have my phone. Um, she does, she got me dressed for the Tonight Show. She got me dressed for her, her own wedding. <laughs> That was a very funny story right. when you were like, it's very rare that the bride dresses the wedding guest. <laughs> right. Some random dude right. at her wedding. Um, if, if you go follow her, Gordon Stylehouse, two underscores. Gordon Stylehouse, two underscores. No one is better at like, in, listen, in my experience, the quick turnaround. Lisa, I listen, I did The Tonight Show within a day, had a new suit. Like she's fitted, on the go, on the go, ready to go. So go follow Lisa. But her wedding was fantastic. So much fun. And, you know, I'm there with my parents and my aunt and uncle. I'm I'm you go alone to a wedding. At least you can kind of like disappear alone. Right. Like this was I I kind of had to like, you know, I got my parents there. Uh, what what you know, my mom like we should fix you. You know, like it's all like, you know, th uh, their eyes are on me. You okay. know, my parents. Um, but it was one funny. Do you dance at a wedding? I dance. I, I do a little shuffle. I go okay. dance with my mom. I twirl her around. Oh, that's you know, cute. you know, I, I try to you get she, up on there in the mother the mother son dance. That's uh, you. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the way, bride. <laughs> Random dude that needs to dance with his, his mom. mom. My mom like laughs at me when I dance, which is like, come on. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason you're a comedian, right? right? Yeah, I'm like, I'm dancing, and she'll start, she'll point and laugh at me. I'm like, that's like the one thing someone prays doesn't happen when they decide oh, I'm gonna go dance. Like we all know Listen, we're bad. If you're pointing and laughing at someone at a wedding who's dancing, you are not drunk enough. Well, that is. I, I, my mom might have been drunk enough. <laughs> I, I, 
I, don't know. I feel like every like everyone da- like that, that's the whole idea is like bad dancers, good dancers. Everyone right. dances. Everyone's drinking. Everyone's just like uh, letting their inhibitions go. That's the know? one thing you say to yourself before dancing at a wedding is at least no one will point and laugh at me. <laughs> Except for my mom. Except my mom, yeah. who's pointing and laughing at me. And I'm like, what am I doing? If you think it's bad, wow. You know, what do the women that I want to fuck think? You know, so <laughs> so then there was one thing that happened at the wedding that I want to get your opinion Let's on. Let's hear it. It was so funny. Because people were drinking. I'm having a great time. I did our thing that we talked about last week. I was having Diet Cokes in between every drink oh, to try nice. and like... You right. Know, space yourself. Space myself. Pace yourself, as they say. Pa- yeah, I, but it, thank God I did, because the, there was... You know, I by the end I was like, you know, tipsy. By the time I, the, I, the mini the by the time the hamburger after party food was out, you were uh, ready to go. Those sliders were coming out. <laughs> I was I was you know foaming at the mouth. So, you know, I'm at the rando table. Okay. You know, there's a rando yeah. table at yeah. every wedding. Right. And if you're wondering where the rando table, you're at it. <laughs> okay. Well, if you don't know every person at the table, you're at the rando table. Right. Much, yeah. And that's okay. I'd yeah. expect myself I mean, to be. What are you, you're either going to be at your parents' table or at your own table if you're not at a rando table, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't know anyone here. You know, like I'm. I'm. You know. Was it a singles table? So I don't think there were a lot of singles there, but like I, I, you know, I sat at this table and you try to go shake hands, say hi to everybody at the table. I introduced myself. I think. And it was funny because, like, but you don't want to, like, acknowledge you're the rando table. Okay. So you just want to go, you know, whatever. Hi, you know, how hi. do you know the bride and groom? Right. You'd have that right. game. So we all start talking. And this one woman comes over to the table and she's like, she's pretty hammered. I, I was actually happy to see her. Okay. You want a drunk pace car at a wedding? Right. You've always you, talked about that. Yeah. I've, that's my always been my thing where you need someone who's, you find the drunkest person and you just get behind them. Yes. Have, like, have like slightly less to drink than them just, just a little bit but you, no one remembers the second drunkest person at a wedding <laughs> yes only remember the first drunkest person and this person pretty wasted okay, okay. and they come sit over with us and i'm after introducing so you kind of try to introduce yourself to them mm-hmm. and they're just like in their own world and, I, and i'm looking at them and they're like oh what and this this woman she just looks at all of us she goes look at this what is this the discard table <gasps> Rude. She's not at the table. Not at the table. Came over to let us know we were the discard table. Discard table. Great great name, though. Yes. I I respect the branding. And I will call it the discard table from here on out. You prefer that to the singles table? I think it's more (laughs) honest. (laughs) Because it was. the. She goes, what is this, the discard table? And then all we talked about at our table is that we were. Did she just call us the discard table? Which is like, I wanted to be like, this is kind of what the discard table would talk about. <laughs> the the like leftovers. Right? With leftovers. I the think trimmings. there was a whole movie about that, maybe with Anna Kendrick, about like being the like. The rando table at the at the wedding. It is a yeah. It's all the like you know mismatched socks. You know right. there was a couple the loose with a kid. Pieces. Right, we were, we were really. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, they're having planned a wedding. There does come a time when you're planning, when you're when you're doing the you're doing the mm. tables, and it doesn't quite fit. Right. And you're kind of like, all right, like I have to choose some people to feel a little weird. Right, it's it's the pieces. Right. It's like you build the couch and go. What are these extra nuts and bolts? What are we yeah. gonna do with them? Well, with you, I mean, with you at my wedding because obviously, I mean, you know, Sammy and Eileen and stuff right. like that. So I had you sitting with them, I think, for the rehearsal, and then I was like, but you were someone people were like excited to hang out with. So I was like, maybe I should spread him out. Well, as that, like a party favor. That's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of the problem with with, with, with being me. <laughs> okay. Cause I'm not that fun. I, I I'm more of a quiet hang. You know, I'm not like I'm not there. I'm not fucking bozo the clown. I'm not like <laughs> you know like I, I I'm not gonna like make a fool of myself. No, I think it's more like people like know of you, know who you are, right. and so like would be like excited to 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 meet you to chit chat. Yeah, I, I, listen, I can make a nice conversation, so, but sometimes people misjudge that as like whoa whoa, give me the jokes, man. And it's like I'm not fucking making balloon animals, you know, like. <laughs> So that the, the discard table would make me laugh, and then us talk, and then and then like the anger that ensued. What are we? Did she just call us the discard table? What are we, and I'm like, eh. so my parents were in town. It felt like parents' weekend, right? You know, like a college, and yeah. like you have to set up where to go with these people. 
Where'd you, you take know? them? So they're like stray cats. Like it's like they're tough to wrangle. So <laughs> we went to. They stayed with you. <laughs> Come on, stop it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> when people tell me their parents stay with them, you I have like. A studio. I, <laughs> well, I was. I, I don't care if you have a fucking four bedroom mansion. Okay. When people tell me their parents stay with them, I'm like, I mean, I'm in. Ch- I like can't. I have a buddy. He was in a studio. Her parents were from Europe. They would stay in there with them. Yeah, and I was it like, happens. I mean, remember that guy who asked the girl to stay with to stay with her that one night stand because his his <laughs> uncle and his. And, and his, his aunt. And his aunt were in town, but like they were siblings or something. Yeah, his, yeah. Uh, his aunt and uncle were fucking yeah. <laughs> were at his place. Yeah, I don't know. No, they weren't staying with me, but like, so we went Thursday. They were here Thursday, Friday, then wedding Saturday, which is a long time for my parents to be here. My dad hates New York. Okay. My mom says she loves New York, but then she gets exhausted by it and overwhelmed. So and has no right. Doesn't know like the end. She doesn't I feel like New York is a city where you have to have. There's like a little bit of a learning curve. And if you Absolutely. don't have it, you're just kind of confused a lot of the time. She she knows one street, and it's all the stores that they have in every town. Right. Like, she, My there's mom no wants- reason to come here for the things she wants to do. You know, she it, she'll it, it's just, she's not going to, this was part of the problem, because I was like, we're going to go eat at 12 chairs. Okay. 12 oh, chairs. Great, great restaurant. I think I went there with my mom when it's she a, came in. I, yeah. I mean, we'll take a, take a waltz in Plug City. Yeah. We'll go through the streets of Plug City right now, because... 12 Chairs is a perfect parent place. Yeah. Outdoor, indoor, downtown, not too downtown, off of, uh, you know. Quality, but not crazy expensive. Yeah. Not expensive. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great it's a great value meal. Yeah. Lots of, you can get, a, it's, it's Israeli food, lots of dips. Mm-hmm. Pita keeps coming. But my mom had traveled that day, so she wanted to let me know. She didn't want to come downtown. She kept going, how far is it? And I'm like, how far is Where it? Where were they staying? Midtown East, okay. like uh, on the park. They, they're at the hotel where the, the wedding was. Nice okay. hotel. So like, I go, just get in a cab, 15, 20. Get in a cab. Well, how far? I go, what are you going to, what are you going to direct the cab? Drive? They're going to take you where I tell you to go. And she wanted to like, let me know. You know when moms just want to let you know that, that this is a long day for them? Yeah. So like my mom comes out, so I'm waiting in front of the restaurant. I got a reservation. Like I, I understand that when you have your parents and you have to be on ready. Right. Well, I'm surprised you didn't go to them. I I wanted them to see a good restaurant and like be in. And right. then we were going to the comedy cellar after. They're okay. gonna come to my show, so they're gonna watch us me do a spot at the cellar, which they like would was excited. I think they were excited though. So, but my mom gets out of the cab and I see her and she's like going into performance mode. She comes out of the cab. She goes. Hi. And I'm like, hi. Like you have to like keep the the energy up. And right. she's like, oh, it's been a long day. And I'm like, I know. Come on. We're got got the reservation. We're ready to go. And she's like, I'm gonna need a big old drink. And then as she says that, the hostess of the way at the, at the restaurant, she goes, We don't have any liquor at this restaurant. And I wanted to turn around and be like, shut the fuck up you bitch i'm handling this <laughs> like and then my mom goes no liquor like, right. like immediately like you've, just, like you've just right ruined her day she found the one crack in the armor to like uh, complain to that was she and, laying the groundwork to like leave early to not go to, to the show just to like be a pain in the ass okay you know to be tired mom this okay. is what moms do they just want to make and i go and i go no they got beer and wine she goes wine i don't know my my dad jumps in he's like you like wine like he's yelling at her and then like we finally sit down we're in this like cramp seat it is a cramped restaurant she's like this chair should we move now we're the fucking parade float moving through the we finally sit down and she's like going the waitress is like ah you know we got beer and wine she goes do you have white wine it's like yeah they have white wine like you know like everything and then she goes is it cold it's like no they have hot white wine here what do you think is going on and by the time it all came it was perfect but it's like with parents, you just have to get them to the comfy, cozy spot. Right. Well, that's why my mom would be like incapable of getting downtown. She the, once called. She was supposed to see my apartment back when I lived in Murray Hill. And she <laughs> called me. She's like, she's up. It's like 45 minutes after she's supposed to be there. She's like, so I'm in the city. Where do I go? <laughs> I go, well, where are, I lived on like 33rd and 3rd. Yeah. Where I'm on 76th and 1st. I'm like, it's a grid. 
<laughs> it's a grid. See, it's that's grid. no, you can't even do that with parents. Yes. You have to literally like you have to literally tell them exact I I know exactly. You can't it's a grid is you might as well have just spoken Chinese to her. That is not even a response. Which is crazy because it's like the the directions are inherently in the the numbers. I don't even go what you did. Big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> like I give the address. Like I am on these people as if they are eight years old. All right. I mean that's the move. We but... went Friday night, and I'll give another plug. Okay. Because expensive place. I'll start with it's expensive and cash only. Okay, that's those are that's a rare combination in New York. Yeah. Well, you know, everyone wants to go to Carbone, right? That's okay. like the known place. Yeah. Carbone is a is Disney World to me. Like it's fine. You know, it's yeah, good. It's I've been, overrated. It's I overrated. Think, yeah. But they do Carbone is an is, is literally an imitation it's of an experience. A, yeah. It's an experience. Well, what, that's what they did. They imitated a New York City Italian right. experience. Yes. The real experience is Emilio's Bellato, where we went. And it's on Houston, and the chef is Anthony Vitolo. He's like a young guy. He's okay. the son. And then the mom and dad are serving. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's okay. like a New York experience. So I brought my aunt, my uncle, my dad, my mom, and like we had the best. It was, it was not cheap, but I who wasn't paid? paying. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was not pay? my problem. That's a good question. Who pays when you go out to dinner with your, with like your parents? W what are you talking about? Them. I, don't, I mean, there is a t do you, when you what about, what about will, when, no, when you went no, out no, with no. your but when you went out with your grandparents who and your parents who paid grandparents. It's the oldest person pays. Whoever's got the most money. <laughs> That's the rule. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about here? <laughs> you, know, you, you yeah. You Interesting. Okay. Throw it down. Yeah. I guess whoever whoever has the well now I know there's the structure an, of your family. Right. Well, there, <laughs> there's an age. There's an age where like grandma hands the card to you know the son or the daughter. Right. Take care yeah, of this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's You're not there yet. When they start to not be able to see the check, then you'll pay. No, then <laughs> I'll take their card okay. and pay for them. Um, but what about with your aunt and uncle and your parents? They, they threw in cash, both of them. You know, okay. they, and you're they just work like, it out. Um, I, I think it would be disrespectful. To even try? I wouldn't even dare. Okay. I'm. I, listen, they're That's my disrespectful. Time. I love that. Women out there, you should use that on a date. I didn't want to offer to pay. I thought it would be disrespectful. Yeah, I don't want to emasculate you. <laughs> That's yeah, great. I don't, there's no thought in my brain of like, let me take. They would laugh at me, I think. That's very funny. Right. Yeah. I, well, I said to my dad many times, I go, cash only. And he's just like, so you know, yeah, just so you, <laughs> you know, know, don't fuck me over here. That's very funny. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> no. Well, well, the beauty of it was that Anthony, the chef, like we follow each other on Instagram with the beauty of the Internet. So like I messaged they him sent like, over some things. No, um, <laughs> this is a they point sent over content. nothing. They sent over. This was actually embarrassing. My buddy, I told my buddy the story. He couldn't believe this story. Yeah. So. They, they don't have reservations, I guess, so they just have a line outside. Okay. So Anthony, like, hooked us up with, like, be there at 7, which is beautiful okay. with parents. Again, going back That's to the straight That's worth more than getting cats. A, an app. Yes, I totally agree. So they start ordering, and they, my parents go, uh, they go, uh, fettuccine Alfredo. You got a fettuccine Alfredo? We're ordering from his mom. It was, like, two moms. Like, my mom communicating with his mom was, like, I was, like, these two can't talk. Right. You know, like, it's not going to work. My dad's like, you got an Alfredo? She, and then, like, the mom looks at my dad goes, I can make an Alfredo. I, Anthony can make an Alfredo. Like, off menu. Okay. So he goes, yeah, a little Alfredo for the table. Table Alfredo. Okay. So this big fucking thing of Alfredo comes out. My parents, my aunt and uncle, my parents are like, this is the best Alfredo I've ever had. They're literally like, this is unbelievable. And then it gets to the end, the check comes, and my dad goes, three Alfredos. <laughs> and I go, I go, yeah, I think they combined for the table. They made three portions and put it into a bowl. He goes, I, I, I got to make sure. And I go, this guy hooked us up with it. What do you think it's going to be? You're like, emba you're, he's embarrassing you. I, I, it's tough to embarrass me, but I'm like, we're going to have something's going to happen right well, you now. Should've, you should have, maybe you should, maybe you could have thrown a 20 in there <laughs> and he would have felt better about the. I'm not that thing. embarrassed. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they go, come here to the, to the mom. Hey, we want to check out this, this three Alfred. She's like, what do you think? We're trying to screw you. You know, like it turned into, oh, it turned like, into a he goes, no, no, no. I just want to eat. She's like, oh, come on. What do you think? We, we wouldn't do that to you. And I'm like, and like, you just see him, you know, the chef looking out like what's going on over there. You know, like, it's like. 
they went off menu to make you an Alfredo. You're sitting here being like, whoa, what does this cost? You know, like, I don't know. Right. It's like everything is a thing with them. Yeah. My parents. It's just never a dull moment. That's but that's but it, was a, it was a fun weekend. It it's really not, was. One really quick thing back to the Please. wedding though. What is your thought on a singles table? I think we've discussed this once in the past. Love it. But I don't right? Love I it. think they're great. I was The discards? I, th- I think I've only been at a singles table once and it was like the most fun night. Oh, it's the best. And and I think because it's like <laughs> it, you know, that introduction. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, what's your story? There are things to talk about. That you actually have more to talk about with the discards than you do. Of course, than your own friends. Than your own friends. Because right. your own friends are like, oh, what else? We know each other. I have no, like, st- gotta, like, what stories can I go into? Yeah. You know, the discards, you get to be whoever you want to be is that the branding night. of the single. Ah, okay. listen, I like this girl's move. The, what a bold, drunk woman move. Like, just to come over. What are those, the discards? <laughs> Fucking great. I, I, I've been laughing about it ever since. That is really great. I love that. Okay. No, I love it. I think it's a great way to meet people. You're next to me. Listen. Some people are like offended by the idea of a singles table. Like, I want to sit with my friends. I've heard this. I've heard this opinion before, and I think less of that person, actually. Yeah. Whenever they say that, I'm like, what? You can't fucking get through it? Like, from discomfort. It's also like if you're sitting at the table the whole time, there's like something wrong with the wedding. And you. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, maybe that's why you're at the discard table. Right. Because you can't just start a conversation with a stranger. Yeah. It, 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 when people get mad at their table, you go, okay, you couldn't figure this out. You know, you couldn't make... Make it work. Maybe everything in your life is your problem. Right. <laughs> right? Well, maybe you're problems. the reason that you're, you, you are... <laughs> Like at this table, this all makes sense now. This is, you know. Right. It does feel good when you're at a table that makes sense. Even if it is the discard table or the end yes. table where you're like, this may, even like when you think about your relationship to like the bride, like if I'm on the table, that's like clearly like I'm the least important person right. at the wedding and I am the least important person at the wedding. I'm like, okay, I feel good. Nothing I- makes me less, un- less comfortable than I'm like someone I'm not that close with. I'm like right next to their table. I totally like, agree. I feel like things are, we're not on the same page. No, it's nice <laughs> to know where you land yes. in this grand and, scheme. And to feel like it's an accurate assessment of where you believe you fall in that person's life. There is nothing that could be worse than being a discard who's not at a discard table. Right. Right. Like if I was at, you know, close friend, what? Who? How'd you end up here? Like people would wonder. Right. What's a discard doing here? <laughs> How did they sneak in here? Right. Yeah. I'd be embarrassed. Okay. Well, well, that's who you are at the wedding is who you are in life. That's right. <laughs> Me and my discards. There you go. Before we get into it, I'm I'm on the road. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm doing stand up. I'm doing stand up. When are you going to Huntington? It's not till the fall. Okay. Still working on that I was that looking date. at your website. I it's coming. It. I've, Sorry listen, to be that person. I know. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm in Kansas City, Missouri is the first stop. Where did I do with my phone? Oh, you guys took. Uh, Kansas, don't worry about it. Can, Jaredfree.com, 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 Nashville, Kansas City. Um, I'm coming all over this great country of ours. Um, yeah, Long Island in the fall. It'll be out hopefully by this time. Um, and like, we're still trying to sell this special. Like I, you know, if anyone out there, I, I was thinking about this. I was like, everything I have is because of this audience. This audience is the best. The best. We love them. And I know that we have a high end audience, like big time, you know, jobs and money bags, money bags, right? Yeah. They pay for dinner at Emilio's Bellato. <laughs> exactly. so, <laughs> they pay for dinner for their parents and a loser like me. If you know someone at Netflix, start bothering these people. Yeah. Bother them. You Tell know, them. I'm, I'm releasing. Demand. Right. I'm releasing our, 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 our people because we got a great Sick special. Em. Sick them. Yeah. yeah. We have a great special. It's Betches and myself. It's we came gr- together. It's the funniest thing that uh, that it would be on Netflix comedy specials. Thank if it, you. If it made there. You and my mom agree. <laughs> and <laughs> if I do say so myself. It's called. Here's the thing. It's called 37 and single. That's what it's called. Yes. If you're out there and that relates to you, 30 and single, 28 and single, 29 and single. Even if if it doesn't relate to you. If you've been 37 and single and you're now married. If you were 28 and single, now you're 29 and married. It doesn't matter. There's so much more in there even than just like the the single or the dating stuff. There's so much in there. I guess what I'm trying to say is the relatability is key. Like it's a special made for people who like the show and your friends. If you like the show, you're going to 
left from like the minute it starts until the minute it ends. It's what's getting frustrating to me is because like I feel like I'm screaming into the abyss. I'm like, I, I, I this is wide. I, like I, I, it's made for everybody. It's mm -hmm. made to laugh with your mom and your dad and your brother and your sister and your friend and your in the group chat. So. You know, if you're out there, I, I was you know thinking about this on the way Netflix, here. Just yeah. fucking scream at them. Until scream at them. Be like, what the yeah. fuck? Right. Have you seen this? I What's heard it's great. What's the matter with you? Exactly. Let's get to the That's emails. That's usually the best way to persuade someone. No. To something. <laughs> Honestly, it's not so bad. All right. I'm going to read our first email. Let's get to it. Okay. Jay and Jay, I'm a loyal benefit subscriber. Thank you. My question is about how to manage expectations and patience when Hold you on. know. Before you start, the um, there was a person that was coming by me the other day and I was sitting having coffee and she goes, I'm listening to the podcast right now. And it was a Tuesday and I was like, yeah, that's a subscriber. That's a, that's a, that's fucking, a, that's a big time. That's a loyal listener. listener. I was like, and th yeah, then I kissed them on both cheeks and you <laughs> hugged, know, them, I right. hugged them. I thank said, thank th you. Thank them for paying for your coffee. Right. Thank, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for, yeah. Okay. Yes. So I, it was very much appreciated. Um, okay. My question is about how to manage expectations and patience when you have an engagement, when you know an engagement is coming, but not as soon as you'd like. I've been with my boyfriend three years. We live together, both 29. We've agreed we want to spend our lives together. He finished grad school earlier this year, and when we moved in together in 2022, I told him that I'd like to be engaged by the end of 2023. He agreed that was an appropriate timeline given his completion of grad school <coughs> and returning to a full-time job. This sounds so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I agree at the completion this of the negotiation. I no, I hear you. I, I I agree with that. Yes. Back in October 2022, he suggested we look at engagement rings together and I was so excited. It seemed like he was trying to propose on the earlier side of our timeline. 8 months have passed since we looked at rings and I know he hasn't been back to the jewelry store since. I feel like it was almost unfair to go ring, sh ring shopping so early and get my hopes up. I'm so tired of people asking me when we're getting engaged and saying it could be sooner than I think. And maybe he's just trying to throw me off the scent. Every time I bring it up to him, I can tell he hasn't really put, put thought into a plan or timeline, which disappoints me. It's not like he hasn't met the deadline of the end of 2023, but I got my hopes up that it would be earlier. I'm even considering deleting Instagram because every suggested post is wedding related, causing it to be on my mind even more. I'm trying to tell myself to enjoy this stage of the relationship and be patient, but I'm not a patient person and I hate surprises. Is it reasonable to ask for a better idea of his timeline, like a two month period that I can expect? Jordana, how did you handle this phase of your relationship? I feel like I'm driving myself crazy, fielding questions from friends and family and feeling jealous of friends that have gotten engaged recently. Sincerely, the impatient pre-fiance. Okay, so... What do you think of this, Jordan? I mean, I was this you, person. You were this person. I completely, it's funny because like I can give the advice looking back, um, but I definitely didn't follow any of it. Like I was, I was like, it was also driving me crazy right. when I was getting engaged. I told you, I, I think I told this story when I told, when I talked about my engagement was that um, we originally discussed like the spring and then it was mm. COVID mm. and then it was May. And I was like, and I, I was like, what, I was like, is he, is he going to. Do it as you know. And then finally, I was just like, "Where is my ring?" Right. <laughs> like, I, where the fuck is it? Where is it? It turns ring? into a heist. Right. <laughs> where it's a where stick is up. it? It's a stick up. Give me the ring. Where is my ring? Right. We've discussed this. Where it? Because you, you do feel like okay, like if if it doesn't happen like on the earlier side, you're kind of like, well, is it still like happening? At what point do I need to like reconfirm that this is a thing? And it's looking back, I'm kind of annoyed because I feel like I like ruined it a little bit. I didn't ruin it, but I definitely took away the like Sounds like this person has that in common. That's what I'm saying. This person is me. I totally get it. I had a friend who was dating their boyfriend for like less time than me and they got engaged like a month before me and I was livid. Right. I was so mad. And it sounds so <laughs> stupid looking back where I'm like. Did Mike notice that you were mad that day? And I was told like, him I was mad. About this specifically. Yeah. What did right. he say? He's like, you're being ridiculous. Like, right. it's not a race. Like, um, it's going to happen. It's not a race. And I was like, you know why? It's funny because I was like, I think there's something in the back of your head. And the, this woman talks about it, too, where she's like, everyone's wondering when I'm getting engaged or like. no. The streets are buzzing. But here's the thing. <laughs> Here's it the thing. It does feel like that. I understand. I actually think that the streets are buzzing a little bit. Not like, in the, right. you know, they're not, it's not the topic of conversation every day, but it's funny because after I got engaged, I was talking to a different friend and I was like, yeah, like when so-and-so got engaged, I was like, um, 
I was so annoyed. And she was like, I was actually thinking of you right. when that happened. <laughs> and I, I thought you might be annoyed. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, it, it is a good point. Yeah. Because no one's talking about you, but everyone's judging you. Yes. So like, but they're not saying it to you, but they're but the thing that you're thinking is not totally crazy. Like other crazy. people are well, thinking about when not, the guys are not his friends are not thinking about maybe, that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I've thought. Oh, you have. Here, okay. Here's the thing, guy, girl, whatever you identify as, when you see a table at the wedding, you go, "Those are the discards." <laughs> It doesn't matter. So when you say Jordana, you go, oh, dating Mike, not married yet. Been a while. That's the, that's yeah, the headline. That's, that's kind of a... That's the headline. Right, they, that's so, not what you want. That's not the buzz you want on the street. That And that is the branding. That's the buzz. And I, so I, when people... we I like this podcast for this reason because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's so easy for someone to go, no one's talking about you, then next no. next topic. <laughs> no, people, when they when you have a branding, mm -hmm. you are what you is, you know, this is, this person, they're, you know, we all have a social media platform. Everyone has at least 200 friends. Yes. And those 200 friends intermingle and they have a thought on you. You yeah. know, I don't know. Sometimes that becomes uh, frustrating because you're like, oh, uh, you know, I'm the I'm the blank one. Right. You know, that's yeah, annoying. And you don't want to be that person. You want right. to be the person who's, you know. But you also don't want to be the one. Oh, you know, that's Jordana, the one that annoyed her boyfriend into right. marrying well, her. That, yeah, that's, well, that's, that's a different that's branding. Worse. That's worse. But then sometimes, you know, like that method works. For that person. Right. But do you like and I think that's kind of where I'm getting, this email gets to right. me where I'm like, cause I hear this and I go, you know, if, if we want to like math it out, yeah. if you want to like make it, take emotion out of this. She gave him a due date. Yes. She can't be mad until that she, due date. She's got six months, right. over six months by the, when she's writing this in until the due date. Right. You fucked up. She's right. She gave the wrong due date. She gave the wrong due date and she keeps, she says, uh, you know, all my Instagram, you know, everyone keeps talking to me about the, uh, when are you going to be engaged? Not his problem. He's got a due date. It's only his problem. Right. When you make it June his problem. June 1st or January 1st, 2024. Yeah. That's when, that's when it's his problem by your design. What I like, what I heard, she's actually better off than you were. You said springtime. Right. Whew, there's no hard that's, date. That, right. that, that would have driven me crazy. Yeah. What's springtime? And I didn't you know? get it till August. Right. Because was, that springtime leaves it vague enough. She's given a hard deadline, which I appreciate. But here's what I would ask you. And I, and I mm -hmm. think it's a good question for her to ask herself. Were you, were you surprised by the engagement? One. Okay. Um, Ish. And was <laughs> okay. Ish. Well, uh, were you happier with the surprise than you were upset about the wait? Um, I was surprised ish. I would say I knew it was going to be like within I would say in my mind within a few for certain few okay. month to a week few so weeks. You were time assured frame. an engagement was coming. He wasn't leaving you. No. <laughs> you know, so I, right. But I'm saying but when it happened did it make it all worth it? Yeah, I mean, looking back here. Well, here's the thing. Looking back, I'm like, I can't believe I was so hung up on like the difference in a few months. Mm. And um, it seems so stupid now that I look back. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it definitely didn't feel that way. And I think that I did ruin not again. I don't want to say ruin, but I did take a little bit away from it by being so by not living in the moment of that time before it happened. Right. No, I. I but would you have been. You know, I, I guess my question is more like, would, you know, if you had said to Mike, like, hey, like, because I'm looking at her email. Right. And her email, she's like, I hate surprises and I'm not a patient person. Do you hate this surprise? Are you not patient for this thing and you are a patient person and usually like surprises? Will you like this surprise in, in the rearview mirror of your life? Right. Because right now they have to admit to who they are, or who they want to be. And that's not what the, that's what they're the, who they want to be is, yeah. By the end of twenty twenty three, who they are is now. I want to be married now. <laughs> right. So I I think that's like a big thing they need to look in the mirror because if if it's I want to be married now, they need to renegotiate their contract with this person. Right. Be yeah. I think say, which hey, I think is okay. Hey, I'm already going. Which is oh yeah, totally okay. Hey, I've been thinking a lot about this. I'm going crazy here. You know, right. like I I don't like this surprise. I I don't. 
Yeah. I want to be, I want to plan for this. I want to start getting ahead with wedding preparations. I want to start booking venues. I want to have the fun that I know I will have more fun in the planning process than this will they, won't they bullshit right. we're doing. Yeah. And I think it's hard, especially if you are the planner in the relationship yeah. to be like, oh, I'll just sit back and let you take your, do whatever you pick the time, you pick the place. Like it right. is hard if you're the one who's usually doing all that shit to be like, Oh, I'll just wait around for like, cause it's also, it's, it's, I mean, the idea of the proposal is very dated in that, you know, you just have right. to be like waiting for someone to choose you. <laughs> like, um, I remember my therapist was like, maybe you should propose to him. And Mike, and I told Mike about that after he was like, I would have hated that. Right. I would have been like really annoyed about that. Right. <laughs> that right. Cause it, again, you, you know, you're like, you're taking something away from him too. Right. But it's be like, then get on it. <laughs> well. Because she even says that in her email. She's like, when I, you know, he doesn't seem too, too worried about it. You don't know. Right. He, yeah, you could be planning be, the perfect thing. You have no idea. Yeah. But maybe I think, this I think is all, worth, you know, this is, maybe this is all part of the plan, yeah. you know? And if it's not, you reserve the right to be upset about it. I would take a two-pronged approach here. One, I would try to live in the moment. I, very difficult. Yeah. I would try to be like, I know this is happening um, I need to enjoy where I am in my life now. This is obviously easier said than done. This mm -hmm. is something I tried to tell myself. You know this is happening. You have a good relationship. You're like, the rest is really just details. Right. On the other hand, I think if you really can't manage to do that, just share you when you're in a calm mode, not when your friend gets engaged and you start screaming at him. Um, <laughs> your sister on a recent oversharing had yes. great advice on this, you know, We'll make, accept or make decisions in the calm, not yes. in your anger or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Make the like make decisions or have those conversations when you're calm. Yeah. When you're calm, you can just be like, hey, like the fact that I know that I said the end of the year, it's actually giving me a little bit of anxiety. Like there's all this stuff that I really want to do. And I actually feel like if I could go back, I would have made the I would have preferred to get engaged a lot earlier this year. Yeah. So. And, and and I don't want the secret. Right. You just have yeah. to admit to that. That's yeah. not what I want. I prefer I want. like earlier to to big surprise. Right. Big intricate crazy surprise. That right. Just give me just hand me the ring. <laughs> Let me give do it. Give it to me. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, it's, I totally get it, but I, good it, luck. They're gonna be okay. Let's do some awkward sex. UUP at Betches.com, UUP at Betches.com. Keep sending yours in. This one is fantastic and unrelatable at the same time. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, you can be both. You can do both. You can do both. J&J, &J, here's some awkward sex for you. I met my situationship in February of this year. We live in a rural area in Northern California where it is totally normal thing on a cold Saturday night to get some friends together in your backyard and have drinks around a bonfire. That sounds like a nice night. Yeah, that sounds lovely. Very NorCal night. Yes, we wear your fairy. Uh, wear, put on that fairy. Right? That sounds like if I think of a fairy outfit situation, that is what, what I think of. We went to, just went to Plug City I real mean, quick. <laughs> they, they're not even sponsoring today. I'll take a T-shirt. <laughs> so one night, my, my situationship was hosting said bonfire and was cutting out. And here's where it gets unrelatable to me. And was out cutting more brush. To keep yeah. the fire going throughout the night. This is not something we do. I can't even imagine how you even cut brush. But you do. You okay. Do. We were being flirty. He offered me another drink, to which I said, if I drink this, I'll have to stay here with you tonight. Needless to say, he was fine with that, which led to our first time hooking up. The sex itself was fun, and I went on about my next couple of days. Come Tuesday morning. I'm at work, and my clit starts itching worse than you can imagine. Okay. I can't imagine. Yeah. Uh, but because I work with five guys out on a ranch as the only female, I couldn't scratch it. Can't relate to that, but I mean, this she's right though. At Betches, we're always <laughs> we always feel free to scratch whenever whenever something comes up. Yeah, you guys even have a room for clit itching. It's crazy. We do not. <laughs> there's, a, there's a smoke room, there's a clit itching room. <laughs> It's really wonderful to work here. You know, it's very female, female power. All a lot female of women empowerment here. Empowerment. I, I, I will say I don't want as a, on a dude ranch on like a ranch. She's on a ranch. Yeah. Like I just imagine an old prospector being like, oh, itchy clit. 
Oh, is there, you think there's a place to scratch your balls? Everywhere. The the world is my oyster for scratching my balls. Are you kidding <laughs> to me? Be, to be a the man. Patriarchy. Yeah. And your urinal, as we've discovered in previous episodes. The urinal? Oh. Oh, where, like, with the guy, when you defended the guy who just peed randomly. Oh, on you, the well, yeah. <laughs> you're right. The, the world, world is, is our my urinal. urinal. You're right. I just, Itchy Clit is just such a good nickname at a ranch. <laughs> I keep, it keeps coming back to me like an old man who's in charge of the ranch. Oh, you're looking for old Richie Clip. Well, she's tending the cattle right now, rubbing a fupa. <laughs> what do like, you think the HR department is like at this ranch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're looking for old Itchy Clip. <laughs> well, old Itchy Clip, she's rubbing. <laughs> always out with the cattle. Oh, my God. <laughs> So she writes, as the only female, I couldn't scratch it. I'm sweating, cringing all day long, trying not to scratch the hell out of myself down there and eventually take a Benadryl, praying it would take the edge off. At one point, I held an ice cube down there to numb it. That night, I went to dinner with my parents the whole time. How you doing? Hey. So how's work? Uh, <laughs> just her <laughs> sitting there. Yeah, if there. I were her, I might have canceled. Yeah, I, I, I'm not doing parents' dinner. Right. You want to get the hummus? Uh. I want to get the clit itched now. <laughs> Old itchy clit went to dinner with her parents. <laughs> okay. The whole time I couldn't even focus <laughs> on our conversation because my clit was so unbearably itchy and swelling at this point. When I go to the restroom, I notice a red-yellow rash down there. I immediately recognize the rash and sent him a text asking if there was a chance he was in poison oak before fingering me on Saturday. Again, <laughs> poison what? oak. It couldn't be less relatable to me. Uh, you know what? Now that you mention it. But I mean, if he was, wouldn't that be something he mentioned? Or that he already knew? Well, the fact that she recognized a poison oak rash. I mean, she's a rancher, so right. I'm not exactly. Old I wouldn't, I wouldn't that recognize shit. that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote, yup, I had a secondhand poison oak. I had secondhand poison oak from the night of the bonfire. Yeah, don't get fucking fingered after a bonfire. This is a With lesson. someone who just cleared the brush. Right. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Right. I left dinner and went straight to urgent care, where I had to explain this to the doctor, who was convinced I had herpes, and shame me for having unprotected sex with a partner. That's fucked up. What a fucked up thing. No, no, no. We use protection. Right. He was cutting the brush, and he got some <laughs> poison oak on his hand. That's what happened. Are you supposed to use protection for getting fingered? You should have uh, yeah. used your fingering glove. <laughs> They must have had gloves around the ranch. <laughs> this reminds me of like in high school when like they would tell you to use like a dental dam. Do you remember that? I do remember that. Have you ever used a dental no, dam? No, no. I don't think anyone has ever really used a dental I dam. I remember that was like. Have you ever was, used a dental dam? No, but I, I, I remember that was like a big part of the class. Yeah. And it was like always like, yeah, you just take this tarp, throw it on your woman. No, it was like, well, they were like, you, here's how you make one. You take a condom and you cut it, oh, I and then you you're open right. it. You're absolutely it's right. It's like you like where, oh you're someone you're about to go down on someone. Where's where's your scissors? Right. Like you're doing fucking arts and crafts. Where's the crafts drawer? Right. That's how you make one. Where you do make you keep one, the scissors and markers? You make one out of a condom. Oh, I didn't. I I do remember that. I remember they had dental dams though, also as like a packaged item. Oh, you can buy them. Yeah. My school, I guess, was very very DIY. Right. <laughs> My God. <laughs> anyway, I guess you should have used your fingering gloves. Hey, these sex ed classes. What were we talking about? I think we should re I think we should redo the sex ed for all of the school districts. Betches would be the best place for like a like if you partnered with the government. Yeah. I mean we I can, would trust you and I this. could go into health classes. I don't, I don't know. If know they maybe want maybe me not there. you. Maybe not you. I'd be good for like questions you might encounter. Okay, you'd be like placed, you'd be planted in the audience. I'm the like idiot. <laughs> yeah, I'd be good. You know when like they have the infomercials and there's like Ron Popeil, there's the expert who's like said it and forget it. And then there's the idiot host being but like. how do we do that? Right, right I'm yeah. the idiot host. Okay. And you'll be the expert. So I'll go, wait a minute. How do you get an itchy clit? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse Poison, me, sir. I... If I finger after, if I finger a woman after cutting the brush, 
Is there a chance yeah. that Poison Oak could end up on a clitoris? They did not cover that in my high school. What if he was, uh, it'd be funny if she called the guy and she's like, uh, yeah, my clit is really itchy from the Poison Oak. And he's like, I found the clit, huh? <laughs> Guess you're I saying I know what I'm doing, huh? <laughs> I did it. I did. I started some steroids and it got better over a couple of days, but overall it was one of the worst experiences ever. Needless to say, he felt so bad and even offered to pay my doctor's bill from that night. What a gentleman. I didn't understand that. I said itchy clit. <laughs> <laughs> Siri wanted to know what I was talking I about. They, I hope I said, that the, the mic picked that up. I hope so too. <laughs> itchy clit. Poison oak on her clitoris. Went to dinner with mom and dad. Put an ice cube on it. Siri is dissociated from this conversation. Right. <laughs> Siri, Siri is completely dry. Uh, we are still seeing each other and joke about it often, but every time we have a bonfire, I literally watch him scrub his hands after coming inside. Lesson LOL. learned. XOXO, itchy betch. What do you think, Jordana? We've already talked about this a lot. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Oh, did she click? I guess it's better than getting like an STI. Maybe, maybe I mean, not. On the list of eh. things, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, they're both probably like need medicine to cure. If my it's ball itches even once, I'm like, it's over. I'm done. I have everything. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I mean, would so you'd rather have a, a a poison oak situation? In comparison to like something that stays with me the rest of my oh, life, yeah, yeah but there's, there's of course. curable ones. But curable ones, yeah. I guess. I they're all you know. If you're dealing with that in your life, you know, I wish you the best and don't <laughs> think less of you. I just think, for me, you know, I got tested. I got tested a couple months ago. Yeah, and I, all good. All good. Clean bill. You know, Nothing and it makes and, you feel better. And right, and and you do have that moment. You're like fist pump. Fuck yeah, we did it. High fives to the doctor. Yeah. But you go, you know, you know, the, the one thing that jumps out of me is like that doctor being like shaming them. And yeah, like, that's oh, that's fucked so, up. Like to even like toss around words of things you don't know Especially yet. Especially when someone is like in crisis. Right. Right. Like that's your first Chick thing. Chick walks in with an itchy clit and right. you're like, like shaming that, her. The ship has sailed. Also, like she's being she's been fingered. Right. No one is using protection to get fingered. <laughs> Unless you are right in, if you are using, if you are using, uh, good for you. If you're using protection to get fingered, I would love to hear exactly how that goes. Sometimes I put on a baseball mitt. <laughs> put a condom through your finger. Yeah, throw, throw it in. <laughs> Do you have names for this? I liked um, Candace's names. Yeah. Um, really like, good. She has rash decision. Yeah, it's perfect. Itchuationship. Itchuationship. That's pretty good. Wow, she did call it a situationship. That's yeah. perfect. Right on the nose. I like that. And the seven day itch. Itchuationship uh, wins for me. Close second rash decision. I had old clitchy, uh, old, old, old itchy clit. <laughs> old itchy clit. <laughs> old itchy clit. The uh, Western. The old That does itchy sound like clit. a good like porn Western remake. How great would that be? Right? Old got, itchy clit. I don't know, unless that's like not. Can, I'm, they're sure, I'm sure there's old. someone who gets off on a, a poison oak. Someone's out there. Vagina. There's a you know, there's a foot for every you know, boner. Yeah. You know. Poison cock. Poison cock. <laughs> the old itchy clit. Old <laughs> itchy clit. Her clit was so itchy. She went to the ER that <laughs> night. The doctor got judgy. Wow. Itchy clit. Oh, itchy <laughs> clit. Can she rub her fupa well? Itchy clit. Oh, itchy clit. We wish you the best this summer. Thank you. That was impressive. Thank okay. you. Drinking game. You can drink every time Jared says itchy clit. <laughs> if you're gonna, if you're listening Siri's to this before dead. you go out. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. To, let's do another email. Let's do it. All, All right. right. This is a short one, sweet so one. Weird. One that it's a little weird. We go from not relatable to the most relatable email we've ever received from me. For you. For me. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> I was like, who would do this? <laughs> me. I literally have a story from last night. Go I ahead. I can't wait. Okay. I am a male, 27, and she is a female, 29. I this love guy. that men write the best emails. Right. They're like poetry. 
<laughs> the women write in, I am 29 and three right. months, and I just got over an itchy clit Male, situation. 29. Yeah. <laughs> Male. We are newly in a relationship, sub six months. I mean, All like, the info. Okay. As we started having sleepovers, I noticed her slipping out of bed, but walking the opposite direction of the bathroom. When I started digging. Where are you going? Right? <laughs> yeah. When I started digging into the odd behavior, she shared that in the middle of the night, she will have one cookie and then come back to bed. On further inspection, I could tell this conversation made her feel really guilty. We discussed maybe not buying cookies, but she cannot seem to cut the 3 a.m. kitchen raid. I really value my sleep and have already adjusted my routine to wake up at the same time. Am I doomed to be woken up every night for this cookie addict, or do I just chalk this relationship up as an L? <laughs> Sounds like you wanted an out. This is an absurd. It's a, it's well, it, it, it's funny. It matches his 27 male, 29 female. Do I, you know, cookie at 3 a.m.? Should I end it? Should I go? Like, it's very... I mean, I'm just imagining explaining why the relationship ended to someone who asked. <laughs> she had this 3 a.m. cookie head, but right. I don't know what the fuck... Uh, she was a cookie head. <laughs> junkie. <laughs> well, also, for him to adjust... He's like, I have already adjusted my sleep time to wake up at her 3... I'm annoyed at him for waking up with... Her. Like, don't adjust your time for my eating habit. I mean, he, she's waking him up. Well, yeah. Well, tell how, me a story how, that relates to this with you. I'm a nighttime eater. Okay. To Do you me, have a, every night. No, but I think what she's doing is she's she's going. This is what a lot. Doesn't J Lo have a piece of chocolate every night? I don't know. Isn't this a J Lo thing? Can we, Candace, can we look this up? It's funny. That sounds like something you would read once in a magazine and then just do it for the rest of your life because you like read it. <laughs> well, J Lo does it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> J-Lo has like a one piece of chocolate every Before night. Before she goes to bed, probably. Right. She doesn't but, like set an alarm. But I'm saying that, <laughs> but I'm saying she doesn't drink, but this is what but J-Lo. But she'll have a cookie. But, right. She's not perfect. <laughs> right. J-Lo, that pig. I will have promise you before. she does not have milk and cookies every night. Whatever it is, what J-Lo's doing is like, okay, I have this craving and I'm a nighttime eater. So I relate okay. to the woman waking up at 3 a.m. Do you like wake up in the middle of the night and then go eat? Or is it like you just, I've done up it late. last night? I was like up sleeping up. I was like, look, Plug City, Sakara Life. We, they sent us some meals. I don't think that's in their marketing. It's <laughs> not in their marketing. I am doing what I'm not doing what Sakara Life right. normally does. But I had the meals in the fridge, they're and I was like, good. they're yeah. pretty good. And I literally was like, it was like two thirty in the morning, and I was like hungry, and I have this thing in my brain. I'm like, should I do it? Should I not? Should I do it? Should I not? I'm gonna feel bad if I do it. If I eat, I'll feel guilty about it. There's mm -hmm. this nighttime eating it's comes with a lot. It's very yeah. psychological. So, uh, so when he says she felt some guilt, I totally relate to that because you go, you go, I don't want to eat, and then after go. Jared, you could have not ate. Well, especially if you were with like a woman and then she was like, she's like, where are you going? And I'm in the fucking kitchen with Sakara right. Life, the, <laughs> the walk, making fucking pasta. Like I look, like, that's what I was doing last night, 3 a.m. I'm making the, I'm like, and I kept thinking of my neighbors, like, is someone cooking? And I was, and it is embarrassing. Cause I was like, I'll make one meal. I mean, it's, it's a healthier meal than. than well, most, that was the thing. Yeah. There was a negotiation right. done. And that's where I relate to her with the 3 a.m. cookie. She doesn't want just the 3 a.m. cookie. She wants a 3 a.m. Pizza pie feast yes. with cookies and fucking, you know, everything. Okay. And she's doing this to kind of get through it. This is her way of coping with it. And I actually like her way is better than my way. You know, me hovered over, you know, in the darkness well, eating a bacon, egg, myself. and cheese. She's right. saying I know myself. So I have the one cookie, and that's what the agreement that I have with myself. Right. You're kind of like trying to think that you're a different person than you are, I guess. Me. A little bit. Uh, right. I, I'm oh. like, don't do it. Don't do it. And then I break, and now I'm naked on the floor with Chinese food all over me. <laughs> so I, right. So I actually respect her because this is medication, to be honest. Can't she just put the cookies on her, like, nightstand? Yeah, I think that's, like, the compromise. Like, we got to find a quieter cookie option. Right? Like, why does she have to get up? Right. <laughs> why does she have to creep around right. with, her, with her nightcap on and a little <laughs> little candle? Just, I'm picturing her, like, tiptoeing. Right. Like, a, that, that board game, like, Don't Wake Daddy. What is that? <laughs> I remember, Do you remember that, that game. Very yeah, weird. Yeah. Very creepy game oh uh, creepy game don't wake daddy and also <laughs> creepy music wasn't it like don't wake, wake daddy. daddy very yeah weird. i don't like any of it who developed that is that still on sale uh i think it was developed by itchy clit and the idea was the kids like 
tiptoe around yeah, the house yeah, yeah. so they don't wake the up their angry on. dad. Right. I would love to see like the person who made that up. Or like <laughs> there's there's therapy session. I mean, let's still just change sale? the name to what Don't Wake Dad. And is it still called Don't Wake Daddy? Yeah, we can order it on Amazon and have it here tomorrow. Oh wow. <laughs> don't wake daddy. Yeah, play the commercial. Can we get yeah. the commercial up? I gotta hear the commercial. The game where you've got to sneak into the kitchen for a snack without waking daddy. Land on a noise, and you have to press daddy's alarm clock. Will he wake up? <laughs> they say it so many creepy times. <laughs> I have to say, on the subject of branding, which has been a lot of this episode's like kind of theme, yeah. the discards, Don't Wake Daddy, we remembered the song. Good jingle. I, that, right, but like we remember. I'm surprised no one said anything at the time that those commercials were playing, though. Well, there was no internet. Like, okay, you there know, would be so, nowhere for them to, to gather. Yeah, right. And they, not be outraged. Right. It, it is kind of like a weird thought that you'd only place online. Like, we would only talk about it, like, in good company. Yeah. You go, is that weird? Don't wake daddy? And then, like, you go, ah, whatever. But now the internet, everything's in ink. So, like, right. then a bunch of people go. <sighs> yeah, I don't think the team at Hasbro would be brainstorming Don't Wake Daddy I mean, in 2023. The, the song is crazy. It's very creepy. It's creepy. But anyway, the kids so singing it. You're going to, they basically, like, he should play this song for her. Right. Before he, um, you know, in the morning. Well, there you <laughs> Don't wake. What's creepier than yeah, that? Your I'm boyfriend. Daddy. Yeah. Don't wake daddy. Get it, <laughs> you're gonna sneak into a kid. The, the part of the, the game is that you sneak into the kitchen right. for a snack. Uh, yeah. This is. But it. you can't wake daddy. Maybe she should work on that. Well, I think that's the compromise. Okay. He needs to like stop waking up and going. Is it cookie time? What are you doing? Yeah. That's the worst when you like make a move. What's up? Right. No, no, no. I'm doing something. Right. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm, a, I'm a fucking sick individual. I mean, I and so she needs to make a cookie drawer. Next you to don't the bed. Think, is there a chance that maybe she could figure out a way to like curb the nighttime habits or that's not happening? It's in my opinion that this is her figuring it out. Okay. The cookie is the medication. Right. This is something to not do the amount of eating that she doesn't want to do. The fact that it's every time, every night at the same time, yeah. like it just. She wakes up to like eat this cookie? Jordana, there's a lot of judgment in that question. No, I mean, and I, there's. A I'm, just, I'm that way. I'm I just understand thinking this. maybe this might be like something she could discuss with a professional. Maybe that's an option too. But like a, until we get there, like a relationship might end over that's this. That's true. Yeah, that would be a shame. It would be a shame. Ever over cookies? Sub six months. <laughs> we put, we've had people email about relationships ending over drinking. Never uh, right. <laughs> chocolate chip. <laughs> Never chips ahoy. <laughs> yeah. Tates. No, I'm. I, what did you yeah, intend? Oh, yeah. If it's Tate's, I can't believe she's having just one. I mean, I don't really, unpopular opinion, I don't really like Tate's. Really? I like a soft cookie. Uh, that makes sense. If you like a soft cookie, you're not a Tate's person. Yeah, I th I find them to be like crumbly and hard. Delta? Now you're, Delta now has an individually wrapped soft cookie in the oh, basket. Wow. You got to try it. You'll I got to try it. it. And it's annoying because it's one cookie. So you, if you take three you're just like you're a monster. You're a monster. Well, I mean, you know, or you put them the in, your, in your nightstand so that you don't <laughs> have to wake later. up your new boyfriend <laughs> with your cookie eating. All right, let's play some games. Are you ready to play some games? I am. Hello, Moto. This week we're playing Flip or Flop, a game presented by the new Motorola Razor Plus. If you're looking on oh YouTube, God. we're holding it. Beautiful. I this is like so nostalgic for me. It really is. I, I mean, the idea of a flip, I mean, it flips. It's really cool. Amazing. I mean, I had a pink razor back in the day and mm -hmm. it was just like the most exciting thing that ever happened in my life. Right. This is, uh, it is really very cool. It does bring you back. Um, the Motorola has reimagined the iconic razor for a new era, which means new ways to interact, capture, and create. For this game, we have a few dating situations, and it's time to decide if they're still worth flipping for, meaning you're still interested, or they're total flops and not worth picking up your phone. Love this. Okay? Okay. Should I read the first one? You read the first one. All right. After you exchange numbers, they make a habit of calling you without warning for impromptu conversations. This is something that someone might be like, 
if you knew me you'd be, or if you've heard me on this show, you'd be like, ah, oh, Jared would hate this. I actually don't mind this. Okay. Like, I, like when you get a call and you go, what's up? And they're like, have you met yet? We've met. In we've the scenario, met, you've met already. And okay, and, and you're all, like kind of dating. We're kind of dating. Early in, dating. Impromptu. Like if it's we've been on two dates, they're like I'm just walking, and then I'm just walking. Like it has to fit both of our calendars. Yes, one person can't be like in a meeting. Honestly. Right, <laughs> right. Impromptu. Hey, um, like if you're like, hey, I'm walking. Yeah. I guess I, I guess I would need a text. It's it's a flop if they're just like, where are you? And then I call them. I go, is everything okay? Are you pregnant? And then like. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, so you're immediately where your head goes. Immediately, yeah. what do you? But if you were like, "Hey, I'm walking. Are you walking? Want to talk?" I'd be like, "Oh, that's so nice." Right. And if you had a story to tell, you yeah. know, come with some fucking material. You know what? I agree. I'd prefer this over like small talk texting all day. I Absolutely. hate that shit. Mike and I don't really text that much. Like if no. I'm even if I'm away, we'll do like a call once mm. a day. I think that's a sign of like a good relationship. Yeah, because I'm just kind of like I see you all the time. We don't need to. I don't need to like the play by play of your whole day. But like right. at the end of the day, we'll I'll find out how your day was. Save some material for the quiet times. Exactly. Yeah. We don't want to oversaturate the market. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I this phone call thing. Yeah. Flip. Flip. Okay. Flip. Just like the Motorola razor. There we go. Okay. I'll do the second one. Okay. Ready? The first half of their dinner plate. Dinner plate. <laughs> The first half of their dinner date plan involves biking through the city for a few miles. Okay. First date out. First okay. date flop. Flop. If this is like we've been dating a couple months and they're like, I have a fun idea for a date. We'll like right. bike through the city. When we get to the end, there's like an amazing restaurant we'll, that we'll eat at. Right. It does have, you, it's funny, like six months in, you'd be like, you're like, they're still planning. Yeah. They're still having what a, ideas. What an adventure. They're still creative. Yes. We're not just like six months in and doing the same thing. You're right. Yeah. Six months in, you're like, uh, hey, like when you look at someone you're dating for six months, you go, I got a plan for this Thursday. What? Hot. 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 That's a good move. First date, hey. Um, first no. date, hey, we're going to do a bike ride. I want to get you clit itchy. <laughs> and then. <laughs> and sore. From the, from the for the first date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I I First date, I don't want to do I want first date, I want to be able to leave within an hour. Right. You want out. Yes, I want an out if it's not going well. Yeah, I don't want to be like, "Hey, where uh I got to go. Right. Where do I return the city bike?" Yes, the dates have to start short and get progressively longer. Right. And a dinner date, I guess I guess in this scenario, first half of their dinner date plan involves biking through the city for a few miles. Let's say we're fourth date in. Fourth date, I was just thinking about that. Fourth date, okay. Third date, maybe. But it's got to have direction. It can't just be like... I have hey, a restaurant that I'm that is at the end of this bike path. Right. It feels very San Francisco. We've It's been a very NorCal yeah. episode. I think that'd episode. be fun. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, so flip. Flip. <laughs> like, this is so much fun yeah, to do. Yeah, it, it really is. I, yeah. I, I don't want to lose you know the screen Sorry. here. I so I <laughs> Okay, let's do another one. All right, last one. As soon as they have your number, they insist you send pics to set up an ID picture. So um, they're going to like put your picture in their phone and follow up. And they say they want to they want to use it as your face picture. Right, like you call, your face pops up. They're like, "Give me a picture I can use on the flop." Flop. I don't know you that well. I don't even know if I want to save your number. Right. You have to assume that picture is not just getting used for like saving on your phone. You're like, "What do you need?" Right. This Why do for? you need this? Yeah, I don't... If we've been... Maybe it's, like, funny or cute if we've been, if like, the third, second or third date, even. If it's been talked about, if you're like, I have pictures for everyone that yeah. I have saved in my phone, it's picture time, I guess, if that's your thing and it's come up naturally and it was, yeah. you know, a jokey thing. The idea of out of the blue, hey, send over your picture, I'm saving your information. I'm not sending like, pictures to anyone that I haven't met yet, for sure, and that right. says as soon as they have your number... <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a weird. Part. It's like, why don't you screenshot the photo that I have on the dating app? If right. You really want it? Which is oh, well, that's you don't think that's a flop? <laughs> that also is you weird. The but date. like, then at least you're not telling me. I'm like, well, you know, how funny would be you get to the date and want to like, jerk off to my my dating app picture? Like that's between <laughs> you and God. God looks down, a little creepy. <laughs> don't like daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, okay. So we're saying flop for that. And with the it's new, a flop. yeah, with the new Motorola Razor Plus, you'll always be ready to flip. It's ultra sleek and smooth design makes it easy to pocket, and its versatile cameras add a flex to every selfie you take. Buy the new Motorola Razor Plus now on sale at www.motorola.com/us. That's M O T O R O L A dot com slash U S. I really love it. It feels good in your hand. It does. And it's it's just really fun to flip. It is fun to flip. And it's fun. To, it is fun. Here's what, all you, day. here's what you get back. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. You can finally like you can hang drop. up on yeah. someone. Finally. It's back. Yes. Nothing is worse is than great, the other phones. This is great phones. for my customer service calls. Right. <laughs> I said uh, goodbye, JetBlue. You're right? Sure that, yeah. Very nothing, satisfying. Right. This isn't satisfying. If you're mad at someone going, boop, like on the button. No, no, no. You want to slam a Exactly. Phone. Yeah, I missed that. I didn't even realize how much I missed it until we just had it. Well, we solved dating again, Jordana. We did it. I'm very proud of us. We'll be back on Sunday with your Sunday special. Boom. The You Up podcast is produced by Sean Kilby, Maddie Paul, and Jorge Morales Pico. Editing by Jorge Morales Pico. Social media by Maddie Paul. Be sure to follow at you.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Betches.